Hi, my name is Itai. Welcome to my talk, Envoy on Kittens, Improving Developer and Maintainer Velocity, which I'm going to describe Drippo Kitten. First of all, let me assert that cats are a very important part of computer science. As you can see, Google's artificial brain learns to find cat videos that was done some time ago, if I remember correctly. Uh, also, 50% of the traffic on the web is cat related, which is quite significant. And also your favorite open source project, Envoy, has a lot of uh, cat-related tags on it. And obviously, let's uh, not uh, forget about OctoCat, which you can see here, and we actually deal with it a lot. First of all, let's define the need for automation. When a project has a growing number of contributors, like Envoy, there are procedures that need to be set in place. These procedures need to be enforced and better yet automated if possible. We don't know, want any human doing all the bureaucracy by, by themselves because then, you know, that just doesn't scale. So there is a need for something to be able to do it. For contributors, some operations need to be performed other customized constraint. For instance, every project has different needs, and this needs to be customized, customized appropriately. For instance, people assign P uh, people on uh, issues PR, but uh, only specific people can do that, or inform, inform people about the other procedures, like enforcing say, the PR body structure, for example. For maintainers, automation can help with issue tracking, specialized approval policies, and enforcing various rules which can be done using some kind of scripting that I'm going to show here. When approaching this, uh, I've seen in the past in big companies like Lyft and Twitter, when interacting with some kind of uh, source control repository, is to build some kind of custom GitHub app or other app that consume events, for example, from GitHub and codifies the required behavior that are enforced and supported inside the company in code in this app. And it's usually not really reusable and a lot of uh, it contains lots of CRUD and BitRot and that causes a lot of pain when the company grows further on. Also, this is not really appropriate for a lot of projects that are open source that not all the time have the correct, the appropriate resources to deploy and develop such a thing. There are some custom uh, applications that are out in the wild, but combining them all together is a bit problematic. When doing such an approach, there's a lot of things to take care of, like maintaining the actual service, authentication, monitoring, high availability, secret management, uh, adapting to GitHub API changes that happen once in a while, while they are much better at it right now. Dealing with GitHub API oddities, which mostly contain uh, concern ordering of events. And also something that often, ne often neglected, which is preser preserving issue context. Which means sometimes you want to have some kind of store that contains some kind of, of, some kind of state regarding your PR that you cannot maintain the set elsewhere. So this is a traditional pro approach, and what actually I'm proposing here is RepoKitter. RepoKitter is something that does actually most of the work for you. It's replacing your interna internal GitHub app or some other uh, integration that you're using with one product that takes care of most of the, let's say, non-business related issues. For example, all of this is now taken care of. If previously you needed to maintain all this and care about all this stuff, now you need only to care about only the behavior that you, you, you need. This is actually done by formulating rat abstraction to have your business logic live in and, and operate towards the other integration. If you create the right abstraction in place, there is no need to worry about intricate, not GitHub event, uh, uh, events related things like ordering or other oddities that are in the API. You only need to deal with the required business logic that you care about. For that, the right abstraction is required. I found that Starlock, which is part of Bazel, is actually perfect for this stuff. Starlock is a language intended for use as a configuration language. It was designed for Bazel build system, but may be useful for other projects as well, which I'm very happy to use. 
Salax allows for deterministic evaluation, hermetic execution, and parallel evaluation, which is exactly what you need because this allows for a jet low cost, low overhead serverless, ar serverless architecture where only Starlock code is executed. No containers required here as we can actually take a script that has all the, the appropriate constraint that we need on it and just run it. It can do only what we allow it to do. Starlock is very easy. It's actually a dialect of Python with a very few differences and these differences are actually important because they allow all the properties that we like, aka deterministic, a hermetic and concurrent. Repocket is using the Excel Starla Go module by Alan Donovan, which is amazing. This is how the Repocket architecture actually looks like. There is a Repocket or GitHub app that you install on your repo. You don't need to write any new GitHub app. You are just using the GitHub app that actually developed and given for you by Repocket. The Repocket engine actually takes consume event from the GitHub app and it can also call a various API functions on GitHub. It executes a Starlux trick on demand, which will expand where they reside and how they are written very soon. And it's variable uh, facilities that we can use in order to actually make it easier to do the stuff that we want. For instance, we got tracing. We can actually have a very nice UI that shows exactly what the repo Tikita script actually doing or done and it's persistent and you can introspect it in any given time. We have um, secrets that we can be supplied to the script. And there's also per issue or per PR context, which we'll elaborate on later. On the other side, there is also a UI, currently quite simple, but it's going to be improved later on, which the nice cat lady here can interact with, with all the components using it. Demo time. I will demonstrate now how you can enforce a bug annotation in a PR body. There's a lot of stuff that actually included in RepoKit that gives us in order to focus on what we actually need to write and not tending uh, various other services. For example, RepoKit includes tooling and APIs for a frequently needed capability, as I said before, secret management, digital debug output using tracing, GitHub API access, fine grained permission model, which GitHub does not give you, and we can actually use the RepoKit to actually enforce it models with version pipping and much more. So how does it all work? In the root of the repo, there is a file called repokitty.star. This file actually is the root module. And whenever there is some kind of event that needs to be acted upon, repokitty knows how to open this file and evaluate it. This is a very simple example of how to write a very simple repokitty script. In this uh, instance, we are registering a slash command. When you type, let's say, in a comment slash backport, what will happen is you'll write the underscore backport, backport script that will issue a label, that will put a label on the issue or the PR that says backport review. I included references to the documentation of RepoKite in each slide, which I hope I can send later, and you can just click on it and see how it works. Handles command actually register a command handler that is executed on slash commands. 
This is a simple demonstration from a PR on Envoy. If someone do it slash backport and you can see that RepoKit added required label on the PR. This is an example of documentation from the reference manual that you can actually look up online even now if you want. It shows you the GitHub module that has an issue label function with the description of each uh, argument. And also it can point you to the appropriate GitHub API that it actually accesses. This is an excerpt from a module that supplies by RepoKit, which you can check out later. In this case, uh, we register a pull request event. When we get a pull request event from GitHub, we can actually perform stuff on it. If you're not really familiar with pull request event, just go to the link and read about it. It's not that difficult. In this case, we handle the synchronized uh, action in the pull request, and you can actually see that we're doing some high level operations here according to some criteria that we saw in this module. Handlers receive context when executed. As you can see in the definition def pull request, action and labels, these are actually populated dynamically. It depends on what parameter you specify to the pull request. You can see where these parameters come from a bit later. This is an example of the use statement. The use statement is used to load a module that is defined in RepoKit, or you can write a model yourself. First of all, you specify the path for the model that you want to load. It needs to be residing in the private or public repository, as long as the application has permission to access it, depends on what you install it. Configuration can be supplied to the model once being loaded. The model will actually, every event on it, an event handler will accept this configuration and be able to parse it. Some generic models are supplied for you as part of RepoKit, and they are open source and they are in this path. It's actually being supplied to the reconcile method, which is registered using handler's command. So when there is slash check owners being typed into a comment, the reconcile is being called with the config argument. And the config argument is supplied to get specs, which can load the passes parameter from there. So there is another way to load modules, which is using the Starlock load statement. Load actually, instead of registering handler on modules and stuff like that, what it does, it brings a function defined in another module, may it be an internal repo kit module like test here, or like on another a third party module like utils and circle CI here, and bring the function that is defined there inside the context that's being evaluated. For instance, the text.match here is being called after loaded. So what is the difference between load and use? Load is a Starlock built-in, which brings in a function from other modules. It can be called from any module. Use is a repo kit function that registers handler from other modules. It can be called only from the root module. Note that use does not bring any new variables into the local context. It just tells Starla uh, RepoKit to load that module and register its handlers. RepoKit allows for a state to be stored for an issue or NPR. This is useful when a state needs to be stored for use later. For example, in this case, in the excerpt from RepoKit owner check module, we actually store who approved which passes in PR. This allow later on to see if all relevant passes were approved and by whom. You can supply secrets to module. In this case, we are using the get secret function to fetch a registered, a pre-registered secret that was supplied using the RepoKit UI to a module. We are using the get secret function. The get secret can be called only in the root module, meaning only in repokit.star. In this case, we actually can also specify secret URL to HTTP. When any parameter begins with the word secret underscore, it will not be seen in the traces later on and it will not leak and repokit the debug information. It will be a little more clear when I explain traces. So here I'm explaining traces. So let's say that RepoKit uh, issued some kind of uh, comment to, in your PR. In this case, this is an example for owner checks, a customized owner check for Envoy. And you can see that there's a little smiling cat in the bottom. When you expand it, 
what happens, you can actually see a little bit of debug information uh, about how this event was processed. You can actually press the trace link, which will bring you the tracing information page that you can see exactly what happened with this event. First of all, you can see the event payload from GitHub, which is long, but it can be very useful for uh, debugging. You can press the evaluation tab. And then you have a lot of information about how the event was actually evaluated. First thing that it's interesting is the context. The context is what the parameters that are given to the handlers can take the information from. This is an example of a context. Every filter can be consumed inside an event handler. All you need to, see, to do is just specify its name as the parameter for the event handler and it will populate for you when it's called. Another interesting stuff is that calls tracing. If you expand the calls, you can see all the methods that were called from your script. The dollar sign before the use says that this function can be used only in the root module. You can see the, all the modules that were used along with the configuration, sans the secrets, because it begins with secret underscore. And you can also see an example GitHub call and exactly what the GitHub call returns. Let's see now PinDref and modules. PinDref has actually all the references that were pinned. In case of Envoy, we always pin the repo kit the modules to a specific SHA. In that case, if the module is getting updated, we can actually repin it in Envoy to adopt it. And these are all the modules that were loaded along with the exact SHA that were taken from. This is very useful for debugging, obviously. So let's talk a bit about RepoKit specifically in Envoy. You can see documentation from every command that uh, Envoy is using in the link above. Also the root modules, obviously it's in the root of the Envoy repository. Envoy specific modules will live in Envoy CI RepoKit modules. These are modules that were written by Envoy people, not me or anyone else on the RepoKit side, and they are just being used. Available commands that are ready for you, which you can see again in the repokit.md on the top, is slash assign and slash review to assign specific people or assign as review specific people to a PR. Retest and retest circle, which are relaunching circle CI or AZP, which is very useful. Wait and wait any, which is mostly for the maintainers when they're expecting some kind of response from someone. They do slash wait and it will label the issue as waiting. And whenever someone else or even them write a new comment, it will just unlabel it and then they know there is a reply there. And another command backport, which adds a backport a label to a PR. Also, Harvey Tuck made an awesome custom made owner check for Envoy, which you, if you contributed to Envoy, you probably know about that alerts when specific owners need to review specific passes in the PR. So GitHub Actions, you're probably under asking, okay, so what's wrong with GitHub Actions? Nothing is wrong with the GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions essentially supply the same functionality. The difference is that Actions are more optimized for long running processes like CI and deployment. You can do shorter stuff, but will bet a slightly higher latency for the stuff which is not very comfortable. They are more resource intensive, intensive and are generally more cumbersome to implement as they require Docker and containerization, which has more layers of moving parts. That's resulting in a slower turnaround time and time to, you know, to take you to actually get the action to run and to be developed. RepoKit is optimized for short running actions and enables much lower latency, faster turnaround time and lower cost. Because we are actually using something that is very, very low overhead, like uh, Starlock in, in the process or in a separate process for a higher security, there is no containerization and waiting for Kubernetes to spin up another pod or container and stuff like that. It just gets the event and runs as fast as possible. We actually have very few instances in GPC, in GCP for Envoy, and I think the highest CPU that I ever got was about 2 or 3%. So if you need something that is very low cost and very lean and mean, this is for you. So what's in the future of uh, RepoKit? There's still a lot to be done. It's working very nicely for about two years for uh, Envoy now. 
but I would really like to integrate it into GitLab, which will be awesome, which I'm working on right now. Also, it shouldn't be hard to take it and put it on premise if you need, uh, which are paying a lot of money, let's say, for to GitHub. Improved UI, currently the UI is pretty minimal. It's very effective, but it's very minimal. Also script testing and some kind of GitHub fake to enable the script testing is very high in the priority, priority list. And also something is very high, even more documentation that I have now in order to onboard more people. And so my experience showed me that people actually getting onboarded on, on, boarded on RepoKitty very, very fast, which makes me happy. I'm looking for more projects. So go and go to uh, repokitty.io slash waitlist. And if you want, sign yourself there and I'll get to you the moment that I can onboard more, which is pretty fast. I just want people to come. For more information, there's repokitty.io. You can have links there to the documentation, a link to open support tickets. Please sign on the waitlist if you're interested. And also, I want to do some kind of hands-on lab session when enough people are going to sign in. Just go to repokitty.io slash lab, sign there, specify your time zone because this is important, and we'll organize some kind of lab session or maybe a few of them to teach more people about repokitty. Thank you very much. Uh, questions? Hi, uh, I hope you can hear me. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. All right. Hey, good af good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to listen. Feel free to ask questions in the chat. Yeah, hey Ryan. Uh, yeah, I'm considering it. I need to think about it some more. I don't think the code is really ready to be open sourced. It needs to be, uh, I think, maybe better documented because I'm the one who works on this. Uh, but yeah, I will consider it depending on the interest. And if you uh, if you want it open source, just let me know whoever is in here. I'd like to say again that if you're interested in uh, testing RepoKitty or interested in some kind of lab, uh, go to repokitty.io. Uh, you should have links there, I think, both to the lab and the uh, uh, waitlist. In any case, it's repokitty.io slash lab or slash waitlist. Thank you. Also, if you have any question, you can email me. I'll post in the chat the email of oh, further uh, questions. Um, yeah. Sure. Thanks, Alvi. Thank <laughs> you. 
when you have time, I'll be more demos, uh, but yeah, maybe some other time. Vizan, who just uh, entered the session here, uh, did some uh, interesting uh, plugins for, uh, for HippoGitF. Also, Harvey did the owner's check, which was uh, really cool. Based on my owner's check, he uh, made it more specific to Envoy. Um, I can't say enough how much um, Starlark is awesome, especially the implementation by Alan Donovan. And yeah, I think that there's really no need to create a container for anything. Just go and, uh, you know, if you have some kind of gel environment like Lua or, uh, or Starlock, you, you can actually use this. Maybe I'll talk in the future some other place about uh, the benefits of such environment. I think it could be very cool. I'll give another minute to for to question. If there's nobody, I'll just leave. All right. If you do the lab, I will make you a repocket a certified engineer. This is cool. I'll make a sticker. Of that. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to email me and also register on repokita.io and um, yeah, I'll give you back the time. Bye-bye.